Hello and welcome to Star Wars The Force Awakens Predictions Video with Mike and Rich. Hi. Hi. Hi, hello. Which camera am I looking at? Well, whichever one what? you'd like to. Oh, oh, there's a camera. Um, on today's show, one and only show, we're going to talk about <laughs> the, uh, the upcoming film, Star Wars The Force Awakens. Uh, at the moment of this recording, uh, it's, it's coming out in two months, and um, they have released three trailers, the uh, uh, teaser trailer, yep. the second teaser trailer, and the third teaser trailer, <laughs> none of which provided any substantial information about the film other than clues, uh, cryptic lines, vague shots, and uh, uh, dialogue like, I will finish what you started. Do you, remember, do you remember 80s trailers when they would like plot point by plot point explain the whole movies? Ghostbusters is about four guys and they start a ghost catching business and then they buy proton packs and then they shoot at the ghost of the proton packs. Ghostbusters. Hey, anybody see a ghost? They catch the ghost that won't stay dead. Now it's, you have one chance. There is hope. Just let it in. There is hope. Light in the darkness. That's, that's a good one. You should write these trailers. <laughs> I did. I wrote the I wrote the trailer for the Force Awakens. because I have no idea what happens in the movie. They just hired me to write the trailer lines. Well, that's fair. Yeah. That brings us to the subject of our video. Um, we're going to talk about what we think the movie's going to be about and what's going to happen in the movie. <laughs> uh, this is this is the blind leading the blind mm -hmm. because I I'm I'm not the I like Star Wars but I'm not the biggest Star Wars fan. I have not followed any of the news. Yes. I know everyone and their brother, they're speculating on this movie and they're hyped up, and I'm just like, it's going it to come out soon. I'll I, find out then. I've caught a couple of small things via osmosis, but uh, obviously there's tons of speculation. There's really in depth theories. There's all these people mm -hmm. writing 50 page long essays about what's going to happen in the movie. We have not given it that uh, depth of thought. No. Um, and that's pretty much all we're going on is, is examining the trailers. Both Rich and I have done this independently. Mm -hmm. And today we're going to discuss our findings with you and with each other. Yeah. But we're going beyond just uh, blind speculation. We're going to kind of, kind of try to plot out the film. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and we'll see what happens. And uh, we're going to remove this video from the internet on December 19th <laughs> and burn it so everyone can't post. You got the wrong. Unless we're right about everything. Unless we're right about everything, then we're going to leave it up. Well, let's begin. Rich, you are J.J. Abrams, and I am Lawrence Kasdan. Mm -hmm. We are given the task to write and create the new Star Wars film, Star Wars Episode Seven, which uh, naturally will take place 30 years yeah. after uh, Return of the Jedi, unless there's some sort of disease going around that <laughs> makes people age very, very badly yeah. in, in a couple of years. But really, we're going 30 years after Return of the Jedi. What do you got? I, I want to distance myself from the prequels. Okay. So my first prediction is there will be nothing from the prequels. <laughs> we're not gonna see we're not gonna see a Gungan, we're not gonna see a six armed waiter in a fifties diner, we're not gonna see a long neck clone maker, we're not gonna see any of that. It's gonna be almost as if the prequel trilogy hadn't happened as far as references go. And you know, the logic of that is, is built in fairly well because the events of the prequels, 60 years in the past? More like 40, really. Young, young Anakin to f Anakin's a father to Luke's an adult. Okay, so quite a while in the past. Not to say that the Gungans have gone extinct, although they should. <laughs> uh, and, and, but, uh, you know, you're not gonna see a Naboo ship flying around. No, there are no callbacks no. to the prequels. One, you're right. It would be a terrible decision. <laughs> Business decision because everyone hates the prequels, except for the rabbit fans. Right. <laughs> so let's take a look at our characters. Okay. Which one would you like to start with? Uh, let's 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 go with. Um... What's her, what's her face? Why, what's her name? Ridley something? Ridley? Ridley Scott? Ridley, Ridley... S Ellen Ripley? Ellen Ripley? It's Ripley? Okay. What is her name? I don't know her name. Um, I don't know her character's name, but I don't know her name. Uh, her character's name is Ray. Ray. R-E-Y, -E and the actress is Daisy Ridley. Ridley, Daisy Ridley, okay. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, let's let's go with her. Uh, I see lots of Luke parallels with her. True. We we see her running around on on Tatooine, and she's wearing white. Uh, I think she is going to be Luke's daughter or possibly Leia's daughter. I'm leaning towards Luke just because Tatooine and the white robes. Yeah, um, J I think J.J. Abrams will say, uh, I'm going to follow the words of George Lucas. Um, it's like poetry. It rhymes. Yeah, yeah. To, to the point where those are the strongest elements of Star Wars, is Luke uh, the farm boy learning the ways of the Force, dealing with the dark side, his father, Darth Vader, all that. So yeah, you're right. I'm going with also, I'm, I'm ruling Leia out completely. Yeah. Luke's yeah. daughter between him and I have no idea. It's she's, been 30 years. She's clearly dressed like Luke was in A New Hope. Uh, I'm hoping that's Tatooine. I'm assuming it is. I think we It would be really confusing and irritating if they made it a different desert planet. <laughs> I'm gonna go with Tatooine. She's, uh, she's a junk, Junker? Scavenger. Scavenger. Uh, my prediction is scavenger. Oh, definitely scavenger, but also um, I think they show her tinkering with something in a shot where she looks up and she sees what looks like a rebel cruiser leaving the planet. Um, and she's tinkering with something, so that probably gives her that, that kind of technical know-how that Aunt, little Anakin had. It's working! It's working! Mm -hmm. Which makes it all the more clear that... It's like rhymes, it rhymes. It, it's like poetry. poetry. It rhymes. Um, so, yeah, very clear on that. Um, let's move on to the dark character in the trailer. A, a Rilo Kloon? Rich Evans thinks his name was Rilo Kloon. <laughs> I have no, what is his name? Is it Rilo Ken? Kylo Ren. Kylo Ren. Rilo Ken is his cousin that speaks Pig Latin. Okay. What's, what's your guess there? Uh, my, my guess is, well, he's the, he's the guy with like the Darth Vader helmet, right? He's, he's some kind of Darth Vader cultist. There's a, I'm gonna say there's a cult of Darth Vader people that worship him. I think actually the lightsaber, the blue lightsaber, that's Luke's old lightsaber mm -hmm. slash Anakin's old lightsaber. That's gonna be the MacGuffin. He's gonna want that for his Darth Vader collection. And, and I'm gonna, this is based on another prediction. I think, I think the Boyega, I think he wants the lightsaber. I think he's trying to track down Luke. And I think he thinks the lightsaber is gonna help him find Luke. But back, back to, back to, back to. I have Kylo. very different, different opinions on Finn, but. Well, we'll get back to Finn. Okay. All right, all right, Kylo, Kylo Ren. Yeah. Now I'm gonna go on and make further unfounded predictions. I'm gonna say he's either gonna be the son of Luke or Leia. He's gonna be either Rey's cousin or brother, and that's gonna be either the reveal at the end of this movie, or possibly they're gonna pull an empire, and that's gonna be the reveal there. Well, I'm going with right off the bat, he's the son of Han Solo and Princess Leia. Yeah. Mainly, I'm going with this based on the actor they cast. Um, his name is Adam Driver, and he has very distinct Harrison Ford-esque features. Yeah. The, the, the pronounced Roman nose, um, kind of the same eyes, but then he also has the dark brown hair, which is very similar to Carrie Fisher with the buns. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a, a if you're, we're going with the theme of family, the force, dark side, light side, um, you can't have the story revolve around Han, Luke, and Leia anymore. It has to be their offspring. And you definitely want to keep Han and Leia involved in the story as yeah. much as possible. Yeah. Um, so throw their kid in there. I don't think it's going to be a Luke, Luke um, son and daughter thing. Uh, That's just too far in the split twins. It's too much of a similarity. Too much. Yeah. yeah I think I think most likely Ray is going to be Luke's daughter, and Kylo Ren probably Han and Leia's son. And he's gone. He's gone total. I'm obsessed with the dark side. Kind of like a a teenager rebelling against their parents mm -hmm. at some point, where he grew up in the New Republic and became obsessed with, uh, with Darth Vader and the dark side and the things that he learned about that, and legends, because um, they, they mention uh, Ray and Finn both know about this, and they're mm -hmm. asking Han Solo, and he's like, it's all true. The Jedi, the dark side, it's all true. The legends are true. So uh, apparently young people have heard of this, mm -hmm. of, of these uh, past events. Maybe he became obsessed with it, left, joined the order of uh, the Knights of Ren, and then pursued the dark side. As far as young people having heard of these things, I'm going to make a, a further prediction. I think Luke is maybe flat out kind of trying to hide this stuff. I, I think 
there's a deliberate attempt to l make the Jedi pass into myth. Um, my prediction is that Luke will have deemed the Jedi and the Sith just too damn dangerous, more trouble than they're worth. And I think he hasn't tried to resurrect the Jedi Order, I think he's tried to suppress it. He knows he's the last Jedi, he's gonna go into hiding, and I think he's perfectly willing to let the whole Force thing fall into myth. And that nobody in the galaxy is really sure that it's true anymore, because time is marching on and... Sure, um, but again, parallels, mm -hmm. uh, poetry. You don't feel at all that Luke's going to be a villain? They might go that route. They might. I don't know. I mean, there, there, there's also fan service involved with these movies, and I'm wondering if people want to see Luke as a villain. Well, it, it's pretty, pretty apparent that um, Luke was supposed, like, in Jedi, Luke is clearly darker. Yes. I mean, he shows up in black robes. He's, uh, I, I was thinking about some of the lines in Jedi while we were doing our commentary. He, he basically threatens Jabba. He's like, he's like, <laughs> give them to me peacefully or, you know, you're gonna have some problems. You can either profit by this or be destroyed. It's your choice, but I warn you not to underestimate my power. And then at the end, I, he's looking at the ghosts and he's just like, eh, and he's wearing all black. And, and there's, so there's just always this part of me that thinks like he was halfway there. Yeah, yeah. And then, I know Mark Hamill himself likes to play villains. He's voiced the Joker. And can, here's, the, I have to say, I have two thoughts on this. Uh, you can either go one way or the other, all lights. You can go without the Obi-Wan parallels, or you do need a villain, and there's no obvious villain. It's like you're almost only left with Luke or someone entirely made up. The problem is, is that there is just too much villainy in this movie. Um, we, have, <laughs> we have Kylo Ren, we have potentially evil Luke Skywalker. Mm -hmm. There, uh, Andy Serkis is playing um, a, a character called the Su Supreme Leader Snooky. <laughs> um, not Snooky. That's, that's the chick from the Jersey Shore. Supreme Leader Snoke, S-N-O-K-E. Okay. Then there's Dom Hill Gleason. He's playing, I think he's playing just a uh, run of the mill, like, general in, okay. the, in the, the Empire or the First Order or whatever the hell it's called now. And then we have Captain Phasma, which is played by Gwendolyn Christie, a mm -hmm. lady, and she is wearing some kind of silver stormtrooper get up with a gun. Yeah. Apparently she's a bad guy too. See, you, you need an evil wizard, because Star Wars is, is fantasy with, with some space paint on it. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know that you can just have the Empire be the villain without the, the evil Sith oh, yeah. Palpatine behind it. Well, Andy Serkis will probably be yeah. a secret Sith. I have no idea. <laughs> I think Mark Hamill would probably want to play a villain just because yeah. as an actor, that would be something different for him. Uh, and I think it would be a nice twist for the audience. It would be a nice twist. I'm just thinking in terms of J.J. Of Abrams and how Star Trek was just fan service. 20, 2009 Star Trek. I don't know if evil Luke is fan service. I think, I think your Star Wars fans want to see him as the, the wise Obi-Wan-like figure, but I don't know. That's possible. What, what if the arc of the three, the new trilogy was Luke is redeemed at the end end? I, I, would, I personally would hate that because then they're just copying the original trilogy too much. Speaking of that, <laughs> there's another Death Star. <laughs> yes, I hate that. Now, Rich, Let's see if you if you figured this out. Where is the new Death Star? I this is one of those osmosis things. I did read something where this like a, it's supposed to be a, like an ice planet that has the Death Star under it. I heard that somewhere, so well, that's not my speculation. I'm assuming that's the case uh, based on several clues. One, you could see the trench, the the classic A New Hope trench, mm -hmm. in the in the distance. Yeah. Um, and it's it's into the ground, um, and you can see. There's parts where the stormtroopers are turning and you know you see the snow and then you can see those the, the classic Death Star cannons kind of just in the mountains. So Okay. Okay. Um, we know JJ Abrams likes blowing planets up, <laughs> likes big big disastrous epic space events. And also they built one Death Star successfully. What happened when they started to build the second one? It got blowed up. It got blowed up, and it was out in the open. So, what do you do the third time? You hide it in a planet. You hide it in a planet. <laughs> and no one suspects it until, which is what I predict will happen at the very end of this movie, 
the Death Star will come alive and shed the planetary exterior. Yeah. And there's a shot where there's this big like wave of fire destroying the forest, and I'm, I'm assuming that's the engine starting up, or mm -hmm. and they'll be like, "Oh my God, the planet like, is a Death Star." Yeah. I, I think I think the Rebel Alliance or the whatever the we're new calling governments, it, the whatever, whatever. I think we'll just call them the Rebels, and we'll call sure. the Empire the Empire. Sure. Because uh, fuck it. <laughs> um, I think I think they will have known this. I, I think because they showed the X-wing battles. Mm -hmm. X-Wings fighting uh, uh, TIE Fighters. Yeah. Is that the things that look the, like the, H's? Those are the TIE Fighters, like a bow tie. It's like a, that's why they call it that. Pop quiz, what does TIE stand for? Twin Ion Engine. Damn it. What a nerd. <laughs> um, so I, th I think that they know, and I, I, and I think that's going to be the finale of the movie, is, is the, the ice planet. Oh, yeah, it's going to be fighting the, the Death Star, yeah. No. The question is, will they blow it up like they did in the first one? No. Do you think it'll last? They're going to they're gonna make yeah. it last. Because here's the problem with Star Wars movies. Like you said, there's the Sith, and then there's the Jedi, mm -hmm. and then there's the Empire. And what does the Empire eventually, ultimately want? Who knows? <laughs> they, Power. They want to rule everyone with an iron fist, and they want a giant machine that can blow up planets to ensure their... Yeah. Supremacy. Those are the only stories you could tell in the Star Wars universe, apparently, because that, it seems to be what they're st telling this time. But I guess I guess there could be a slight twist where the Empire is kind of like the Rebellion this time around, because now that the Rebels won in Return of the Jedi, they're the new government. So it's going to be the, the remnants of the Empire taking over the galaxy with their new Death Star. That's going to be the... The thrust of Just the three movies. It's going to be them Rebel. coming back into power using the, the mega Death Star weapon. Perhaps. Yeah. And then, what, but the ultimate showdown. Let's go entirely three films in. Uh, the, the original trilogy, Redemption, Darth Vader. Mm -hmm. The prequel trilogy, um, the turning of Anakin to the dark side. Yeah. What, what's it going to be this time? Uh, well, it's going to be turning the brother back into a good guy, and then they're going to fight together against some kind of evil Sith master. It's going to um, be Rey and... and Kryu? Kryu? Kyle? Kylo Ren. Kylo! I'm convinced Kylo Ren is an anagram for something. All the Star Wars names sound like anagrams and nonsense. They should have a Star Wars character called Anagram. And then when you respell Anagram Skywalker? Anagram Skywalker. That's the brother of Anakin. <laughs> Everything about him was all mixed up. Became a used spaceship dealer and just stayed out of the whole affair. Let's talk about Finn. Yeah. Um, now, I, I pieced together some clues. Can I, can I talk about the first yeah. act of the film? I'm going to do it real quick because yeah. there's a lot of information. OK. Um, Finn, of course, we see on Tatooine wearing a Stormtrooper costume. Uh, speculation was he was a, a rogue stormtrooper, mm -hmm. a guy who said, fuck this, I'm out of here. I think that more likely he was a rebel spy hiding in a stormtrooper costume. Yes. Because they show him in the desert and he has, there's this kind of jacket that's going around with this red, uh, red shoulders and gray. Um, and I see another character wearing that jacket. Um, I think Poe Dameron wears it. There's other rebel characters that wear it. And for some reason, he has it with him yeah. when he's in the desert. And so I believe the opening of the film is going to be those guys doing some sort of secret covert shit on a Star Destroyer. Mm -hmm. Then they get found out. The one guy gets captured, uh, and, and uh, Finn escapes by jumping in a TIE fighter, shooting the place up, escaping. The Empire bombs his TIE fighter, blows it up, and he spins out and crash lands into the desert. Which is where Rey, while she is scavenging, meets up with him. They meet up, I, naturally. I kind of had the exact same thought. I'm, 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 I'm thinking they might try to work the lightsaber into this, because we see him with the lightsaber. Let me discuss that. Yeah. Uh, I'm predicting that Finn is a red herring. Yes. He is not this Force-sensitive Jedi. He happens to have that lightsaber, and he takes it out, and he's, and you got Kylo Ren coming at him, and he looks terrified, like he has yeah. no idea what he's doing. But he, on the poster, he's holding the lightsaber. Not going to be the Jedi Knight character, not going to be the one in training or anything like that. It's definitely going to be the girl, um, and that's what the title will refer to, the Force Awakening in her, because she has the Luke Skywalker Force. I'm no one.
We're talking about Finn, we're talking about George Lucas, poetry, it rhymes, um, repetition of history, et cetera, et cetera. He crash lands, I, I, I think their mission up in the Star Destroyer was to find out information about where the dreaded new Death Star is. Yeah. And he carries that information with him, much like R2-D2 and C-3PO carried the plans for the Death Star as they crash landed in the desert in A New Hope. So very similar, very, par very parallels happening there. Mm -hmm. um, and then he meets up with, with the lady, Ray, <laughs> and, uh, and they become best friends. How, how does the lightsaber get involved? That's, that's the big question. The, the only, like, I see the first act being um, uh, Finn escapes, meets up with Ray. The, the, there's, um, this is where I think Han and Chewie will come, will come into play. Mm -hmm. I have a feeling that the Falcon is, is somewhere buried in the in, desert. In mothballs. Yeah, and, yeah. and um, Han is looking for it for whatever reason, this could all be wrong, I don't know. But the fact that Rey is a scavenger is, is an obvious clue to the fact that she has seen the Falcon down there or knows where it is or could help find it. There's no real other reason to make her a scavenger dr digging around inside the, 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 yeah. the, the decaying remains of a Star Destroyer other than to connect that piece to find the Millennium Falcon. I agree that the Luke Vader lightsaber, the blue lightsaber, mm -hmm. is the MacGuffin. Yeah. I have no idea what, where, where they're going with that. But first act, they meet Han Solo, they escape, the, the Empire comes to either get Finn mm -hmm. um, or uh, other, for some reason, but they attack them because you see the parts where the Millennium Falcon's flying around the debris and the, during the day in the desert and they're shooting. Eventually they escape. Part two, second act, they return to the rebel base. We see Princess Leia there, right? Um, is, is, do you think you, you think they're just gonna flat out redo the like story beat for beat a new hope? I'm, I'm, I'm kind of just hoping they don't because I do want to see just something new, but we see pretty solid evidence that there's going to be three consistent locations mm -hmm. uh, a Snowy moon planet aka hidden death star um, What looks to me like possibly Yavin 4 the, the, the woods, the the woods, the the water. There, there's shots where they have like you see mountains in the background and a lot of like mist. Mm -hmm. And I, I want to say Yavin was very misty in the distance, uh, here and there. Uh, and then some of those. You remember the exterior of the rebel base in A New Hope, where yeah. it was like that weird stone structure. Well, it's supposed to be a Jedi temple. Oh, I think. What? At the time of in a, a new, new hope, hope. No, well, not at the time. I think it, just, it was at some point a Jedi a, is temple. Is this a Wikipedia thing? I think so. I don't know. I see. I see old temple-y kind of ruins. Yeah. And that kind of stuff crops up a lot on that planet, and that's possibly where. Where else would you have the rebel base? They saved it from getting blown up by the Death Star. <laughs> where are they gonna move somewhere else? <laughs> see, the thing is, is like, it is a it is a, a polar switch, like you were saying. The rebellion are, are the people in charge, yeah. and the uh, the empire are sort of pushed to the side. So it makes sense. Like the empire was very strong in, in Empire Strikes Back. Where did the rebels hide? A frozen the, wasteland. Frozen planet. wasteland and Hoth. Where yeah. The, the, oh yeah, yeah. They're, they're, in the... they're kind of resorted to a frozen wasteland type planet. So the rebels would probably have their their base and their headquarters on a lush, comfortable planet since they're in charge. I, I have no idea. What the fate of um, what's the city? Uh, Galactica or Battlestar? Oh, Galactica. Coruscant. 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 Um, I have no idea what happened to that. It blew up. It blew up during the thirty years. This was another unrelated battle. I don't know. We don't need. I, well, we're not going to see Coruscant because they want to get away from the prequels. We're not, we're not going to see it. Yeah, take it back, old school. Mm -hmm. Take it back, old school. If I were the rebellion, I would say, let's take up shop. Let's take up residence in Coruscant. Boy, is it luxurious and big and lots all the, of... All the smog. They wanted to go back to the fort. There's too much, too much pollution. There's too much fucking pollution. There's, look at this fucking weirdo with the six arms running a 50s diner. Yeah, why is there a 1950s diner? <laughs> all this is fucked up. All this traffic? Lots of traffic. Lots of traffic. 5,000 people die every day in mid-air collisions. Oh, right, right. Why isn't there a speed limit? Exactly. Exactly. Plus, they turned the Jedi Temple into a brothel. How embarrassing. <laughs> hey, you know, at least Yaddle's still getting work.
What, what do you think Han Solo has been doing all this time? Obviously, him and Leia had some kind of split. I'm gonna say that didn't work out. I'm gonna say Han Solo was kind of that old, old crazy man on Tatooine who nobody believes his tall tales about being a general in the rebellion. Yeah, crazy man! That's possible. You and your giant dog. He is still wearing the same clothes. <laughs> which is the Indiana Jones problem. Uh, yeah, there is a, he, I, I'm gonna go with that. He, he does kind of seem like the crazy man who's digging around in the desert trying to find his old spaceship. Yeah. And that's possible. That's, that's gonna lead to the magical moment when they, when they do get on the Falcon and he says, it's all true, all of it. Mm -hmm. Oh, this crazy old man was right the whole time. I think, I think that's gonna be a moment. Do you think there's gonna be a scene when he, he asks like uh, uh, Ray, like you got this kind of part or and they have some kind of interaction or where do you think they're first gonna meet? I, I think she might like sell stuff to him because she's a junk trader. Maybe he's, Han is fairly settled on Tatooine. Okay. Maybe, maybe he even has some kind of Watto-esque junk shop. Maybe not that specifically, but maybe, maybe there's some kind of trade going on between them. They have a business relationship. I think she's gonna run into him while scavenging inside the old Death Star. Oh yeah? And he's gonna be looking for something too? Yeah. Meet her? Okay. Yeah. And then they're gonna have a, a meet cute, and then um, and then be ad adversaries for a, a minute. And then John Boyango will say, "They're building a fucking Death Star." And so I know this guy who <laughs> claims to have have been, you know, in skirmishes with okay. the Empire and all that. I mean, the 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 rebellion exists. There's X-wings. There's X-wing pilots. Yeah, all that's there. So I mean. I don't know how 30 years of history just disappeared into legend, but I mean, it makes it neat for, it makes a neat, neat it, line it, for the it trailer. Took, it took 17 years for people to barely remember who the Jedi were in A New Hope. That, uh, that ancient mystical whatever, ah, that's crazy talk. That's true. Your sad devotion to that ancient religion has not helped you conjure up the stolen data tapes. Do you remember when, 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 Thousands of Jedi Knights roam the galaxy. They had a they had a building in the government capital <laughs> where they practiced their magic for everyone to see. Sure. Yeah, a gigantic building. <laughs> Do you remember that big war that happened <laughs> ten years ago, Grand Moff Tarkin? That was fought by the magic knights. You don't believe in? Yeah, right. right. Yeah. What do you mean? So yeah, I'm just saying they're, they're, they faded in the legend. Okay, again. I'm fine with that. Yeah. So we're going with Han Solo is a is a crazy old junk dealer. Crazy old man. Nobody believes the stories. And uh, Chewbacca runs around with them. He's, they're still together. So and we, married. We meet up with uh, with Ray and Finn, and uh, Ray's little robot friend is is BB-8. I I think that's just going to be her robot that accompanies her under yeah. scavenging. And oh, uh, he's BB-8 ends up in. Poe Dameron's X-Wing, flying around in the back, much like R2-D2 did. Status of C-3PO and R2-D2. Very good question. Um, C-3PO is absent from the trailer, of course. Yeah. We see R2-D2, and of course we see what most people think is Luke Skywalker, mm -hmm. um, because he has the, the robot hand, um, right hand. Which yeah, is, but we never saw the face. We don't yeah. see the face, and he has a beige arm, um, and then black robes, and he, he does some kind of thing where he touches R2-D2's head. I'm assuming using the force, but I don't know how that works on robots. Uh, or he's just like, oh, R2, I love you. It could be just a sentimental moment. Could be a sentimental moment. First um, time he's seen R2 in 20 years, I don't know, could I don't be, know. Could be some kind of crazy robot character. Could be Luke Skywalker, but that is a scene, uh, and there's clips of this scattered throughout, um, which I think that takes place on Tatooine, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. Looks like a desert planet, it's, it's, it's at night. Um, at first I thought it was like a lava planet, like um, the one in the end of uh, Revenge of the Sith, because yeah. um, there's like embers flying through the air. But I, I think the Empire comes down, and we see, we see Captain Phasma, and we see Kylo Ren, and we see all these bad guys burning everything. And it's like scorched earth. They're like, fuck everything, kill everyone. And uh, we see little teepees in the background. Mm -hmm. So it's like a primitive kind of area, but I think it's supposed to be the, the, the sand planet. So I think R2-D2 is there too on Tatooine. I don't know, it could be another planet altogether. Yeah. But it's that same sequence when the stormtroopers are like, burning everything and they show Kylo Ren like this, presumably like, killing someone who won't cooperate or something. Uh, they're probably looking for Finn. Mm -hmm. 
or he's on a completely unrelated mission to find Luke Skywalker's lightsaber. I, I'm, I'm thinking R2 might even be just more of a glorified cameo. I, I, I think I think BB-88 is going to be like the replacement oh, yeah. R2. Uh, BB-8. BB, it's just BB-8, it's not BB-88? Just BB-8? That would be too confusing with IG-88. Okay, that's fair. Yeah. That's fair. They know what they're doing, Rich. They know what they're doing. And does Anthony Daniels even want anything to do with Star Wars? Yeah. Oh my god, he, the man is in love with himself. Is he? Are you kidding? I thought he was just bitter about everything. No, he no, seems no. like a bitter old man. He, he's, a, he's a big asshole. Yeah. He, um, but he, he's just like, ah, oh, C-3PO, I'm C-3PO, I love myself, <laughs> I love talking okay. about myself. And he says like horrible things about his uh, cast members. He, yeah. he was even um, belittling, no pun intended, Kenny Baker. Um, <laughs> he's like, it's like he, he's not even in the droid anymore. They put him in there for five minutes. He's just, I wish he would die already. And he just he says horrible things. Can he's a, he's a selfish, selfish, hate-filled, uh, um, uh, egotistical uh, monster. You say that though, and I, I can't help but picturing uh, Kenny Baker in the BB-8 suit. <laughs> <laughs> Just stumbling ah, around. Ah. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> or like maybe it's like a hamster ball. He's just in there running. It's very possible, Rich. <laughs> He's got a big magnet that turns the head. He's just running around, turning the magnet. Little people all over the world celebrate that you weren't the one in charge of designing robots for the new Star Wars. <laughs> He's going to do what to us? <laughs> and I'm just going to bring this. Character to life. Uh, it's almost like ceremonial at this point. I'm sure they put Kenny Baker in the R2D2 thing oh, for, yeah. for one shot. Yeah. Same with Peter Mayhew. Um, I, I know I've seen him sitting in the in the Falcon cockpit with with the yeah. costume on. I'm sure it was for seated performances only because Peter Mayhew's he's almost crippled. He's yeah. he, it's very hard for him to walk. So I don't think he's. He's in the Chewbacca costume when they're running and jumping and shooting and doing adventure scenes. I think it's just kind of ceremonial. Same with uh, Anthony Daniels, but we don't know C-3PO's involvement in the film. That, that might be another glorified cami who might just show up kind of sort of in the background when like the Princess Leia scene happens. Right. Yeah, maybe he just lives on the rebel base and, and helps Leia. I'm going to guess he's, I'm, I'm guessing he's just Leia's robot. He's yeah. her butler. Yeah. Now, speaking of Leia, let's talk about her. Yeah. We see one shot of Princess Leia. Correct that, we see two shots of Princess Leia, and I'll get into that in a second. All right. Um, Leia is hugging Han, and she looks very sad. And I think that's because Han has told her the truth, that their son is Kylo Ren, and he's fucking everything up and trying to bring the dark side back. Ooh, that's good. And she's pretty sad about that. That's good. Uh, I'm guessing. She's crying about something. But we do see, now there's another character um, who is a digital character. Uh, his name is Jar Jar Binks. I'm just kidding, everybody, I'm just kidding. But it's a digital character, which is uh, one of those like 3D motion capture performances. Mm -hmm. But uh, the name of the character is... Maz Kanata. Okay, which I, I don't recall that character. You don't see it at all, Rich. I looked it up on Internet Movie Database. Okay. Um, it's Maz Kananta. And, and that's, there's a shot where you see, when after Luke Skywalker says, Aunt my sister has it, and you see a little hand come up and hand the lightsaber, right? You remember that? That's clearly Luke's lightsaber. Mm -hmm. has this little black things on the bottom. And for one frame, you see the face, and it's like a, it almost looks like a, an alien, like a gray. Um, and it's Maz Kanata, and it's handing the lightsaber to Leia. Okay, and okay. You can tell it's her because she's got, you could tell it's that stupid outfit she's wearing. It's that she wears like a beige shirt with like a purple vest, and they're in some kind of indoor area. It's not night, but it looks like a hangar bay or something, and it's dark. So at some point, Maz Kanata the all-digital character hands Leia Luke's old lightsaber. Mm -hmm. This is pretty clear. Okay. How the circumstance comes about, I have no idea. It could be a flashback. Perhaps Leia was, in, was uh, holding on to Luke's lightsaber at the Rebel base, and that's the, the scene when, when they attack. Do, do we see Boyega with the lightsaber on Tatooine at all? No. 
Maybe they don't get the lightsaber until that scene, yes. until they get to the rebel base. Right. I, I'm thinking Maz Kanata handed Leia the lightsaber and, and or sold it to her, because I think that character is supposed to be a pirate. There's that scene when they're walking and there's that red robot. It's yeah. Finn, Rey, and Han Solo, and BB-8. You don't see Chewie, so I don't know where Chewie's at. Um, I think he's there, though. He might be outside. He's probably in the guard. Falcon. He might be in the Falcon, but they show them walking up, and there's all these flags. That's supposed to be some kind of pirate pirate castle or characters like that. Okay. They, they show a couple of them in, in the reel that they played at the San Diego Comic-Con. So I don't know much about this character. I'm just guessing. I think probably uh, uh, Kylo Ren comes and, and attacks the rebel base to get the lightsaber. Yes. Now, Luke, in real life, Mark Hamill uh, almost fell off a cliff in Ireland shooting on some kind of extremely remote island. You've I heard, heard about, about that, yes. Um, I don't know, is, I don't know, is Luke on an island? Oh God, I have no idea where Luke is. I, I have no idea why they want to find him. I, I don't know if they're desperate for another Jedi to help them bring down the Death Star, or times are getting dark again. We need the Jedi to help us. We have to find Luke. Mm -hmm. the, the only real speculation I have on, on Luke is that he is in self-imposed isolation because he doesn't think Jedi and Sith are good for the galaxy. Uh, de death and ghosts. Um, who is going to die? I, th I think they're going to kill somebody for oh, some emotional right. weight. And it's either gonna be Luke or Han. Uh, here's my thoughts. Yeah. Uh, I, I think we're talking the, the, the final act of the movie, the big action pack ending. Mm -hmm. TIE Fighters and X-Wings fight over the, the Death Star. The Ice Death Star, the ice yes. Death Star, which will be a come active at the end of the movie. On the surface of the planet, we will have the showdown. Uh, Kylo Ren, which is in the forest, um, will fight John Boyega. Yes. Um, I, uh, we see uh, Ray crying over something. She's crying a whole lot. Mm -hmm. I have a feeling, even though John Boyega is listed as in episode eight, I think it's going to be him who dies. Yeah. Um, because he's going to bond with Ray, and that's going to give her the motivation to pick up the lightsaber and, and, Ooh. and take over. I don't think it's going to be Han because, or some people have uh, said Chewbacca. Yeah. Like, uh, she's not gonna cry emotionally over the death of Chewbacca. I'm not gonna say it's Boyega because I think she's just going to meet him in this movie and I don't think there's gonna be enough of a bond between them to justify that emotion. I'm gonna say maybe she knows Han a bit better before the movie. I mean, I know you speculate they meet while scavenging. I'm gonna say they maybe had a relationship before okay. and it's gonna be Han. And I think it's gonna be Han because one, Harrison Ford has wanted Han Solo to die for 30 years now. And this might be like his and Loras Castan's attempt to, to do what they thought should have been done in Jedi. It's, it's, yeah, it's very likely. It's very likely. He is listed on as a, in episode eight though. The only one who's not is- Oh, oh Harrison Ford? Yeah. Okay, okay. I mean, it could be just a, you know, a trick. Like no one knows exactly what's gonna happen. The only one who's not listed or confirmed in being episode eight is um, Adam Driver, the uh, Kylo Ren. Character. Oh, Kylo Ren, okay. Yeah, so I don't think his character is gonna go very far. I think he's gonna be the springboard that gets this whole like Sith Jedi thing started up again, mm -hmm. but I don't think he's going to become this like overarching. So like, like a Darth Maul thing. thing where they introduce a villain just to have a lightsaber fight and then they murder him. Oh, okay. Keep in mind, Rich, and I don't wanna be cynical. Keep in mind, all of these trailers have been very cryptic. Yes. And J.J. Abrams made the Star Trek movies. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. The ship. Check it out. Sir, if you ignite the red matter. I want to spot voice. that now! Yeah. I think he's the perfect man for the job, and I think Lawrence Kasdan is, is the perfect man to write the films. But the J.J. Abrams Star Trek films have been very, uh, very emotional, very large scale, but not quite Intelligent. Most intelligent. They're not sophisticated stories. They're just light stories with lots of action happening. And lots of drama and lots of emotion, lots of energy. 
um, which is what Star Wars needs. But I'm not going to sit here and go, this is going to be the most complicated, yeah. you know, well thought out, um, exciting plot. You know, it's not going to be heavy in terms of uh, its structure. I think it's going to be pretty, pretty straightforward. Well, it's like the Luke stuff, it's just, it's just one of two ways. Mm -hmm. He's the secluded Obi-Wan-like Jedi who imparts wisdom and then is either killed off or fades into the background, or you make him the new Palpatine, mm -hmm. and he, he, he is corrupted by evil. But yeah. I, I, I think you get either one of those two extremes. Right. I, I, I'm even wildly speculating that maybe he's possessed by Palpatine's force ghost because they have to work Force Ghost into it somewhere. And that might be a reveal later on where Palpatine's evil influence from beyond is, is, is corrupted Luke. Um, yeah, well, well, while we're in the cynical chapter of this discussion, let's talk about Darth Vader's burnt up helmet and the possibility of cloning him to come back. Oh, just a flat out clone? Oh, possible. I mean, we're talking dollar signs here. <laughs> we're talking Vader in returning in the final film or some shit like that. I was either thinking, okay, I didn't think of clone. I thought maybe possibly you'll see like a full on Vader force ghost talking to somebody just to work that image in. No, because <sighs> Vader force ghost would not be Darth Vader. It would I'm, be Anakin Skywalker. I, I'm, just, I'm just thinking yeah. like, like, like JJ working the, the, the nostalgia angle on the famous images. The Force Ghost is a Star Wars thing. Uh, yeah. Somebody is going to be a Force Ghost at some point in this trilogy. My guess is that it will be Liam Neeson returning <laughs> as Qui-Gon Jinn. Does anybody remember me? Everyone who I knew is dead. Don't you remember um, in the end of Return of the Sith, Revenge of the Sith, um, uh, Yoda was meditating and he's like, I've yeah. been communing with uh, Qui-Gon in the spirit world. Qui-Gon? How to commune with him, I will teach you. I don't think Darth Vader <laughs> ghost will appear in I, 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 I think that's ridiculous. I, I, it is. I'm just, I'm just thinking they're going to want a force ghost, and they're going to want the iconic Darth Vader image in there. They, well, not, they, not necessarily Darth Vader as a force ghost, but... They squeezed it in there. If, if things get desperate, they'll, they'll clone him, <laughs> and he'll come back. Well, this, uh, you say like, they get desperate. Like, how, how well planned do you think this trilogy is <laughs> like do they have any are they flying by the seat of their pants because i was really worried once i heard that jj is not going to be involved with the other two not necessarily because i love jj but just because it's a sign that he's like a huge star wars fan why wouldn't he want to be around why wouldn't he commit to all three unless there's something stupid going on behind the scenes um eh, i don't know i i can't speculate on that i i would assume that everything's fairly well planned out. Okay. I mean, they have movies planned out to 2035. Uh, you have to figure that they're, they're adapting the Marvel films model and going, let's plan all this shit out ahead of time. Yeah. I mean, you remember the TV show Lost, right? <laughs> also, you remember the prequels, right? Yeah. It's just, I, I think, because I mean, they've, they've signed everybody on there. Andy Serkis is involved. Um, there's, there's all these mysterious characters that we don't know anything about. I think there's going to be an overarching plot. Just the thing is, when you boil it all down, it's all going to be kind of the same themes that worked before, because that's the safest bet. Yeah. You don't want to make a movie about a, a political upheaval like the prequels. You want people like the magic of the force, they don't like midichlorians, they like the dark side, they like the Jedi, they like the, the magic of, mm. of that, that, that character that comes from nothing, the Rey character, yeah. the Luke Skywalker character, um, going off and adventuring. Luke, the Force will be with you. Knights, bad guys, family. Mm, yeah. Uh, throw them in a pot, stir it up. Somebody arcs in from good to bad or from bad to good, and there's a giant doomsday weapon. <laughs> <laughs> and some comic relief, and some space battles. There's not a clear comic relief character, is there? I think it's going to be BB-8. Think he's going to be, you don't think he's going to be like the brave R2? Is he's going to be more goofy? Um, I think he's going to be cutesy. Yeah, he's definitely going to be cute, but there's not... Is there, is there going to be bumbling? Is there going to be C-3PO level bumbling? Uh, it might be a combination of both. Okay. It might be a little bit of both. I don't think he's going to speak like C-3PO. I think he, no, no. he makes the beep-boop-bops like R2, but I think um, 
I think he's going to be kind of a, a, a little mixture of both. I think that's probably what they said would work the best. We need yeah. a cutesy droid. Um, let's come up with this new guy. Let's make a little mixture of both. Yeah. Jar Jar is a key to all this. If we get Jar Jar working, because he's a funnier character than we've ever had in any of the movies well, before. Much better than Jar Jar Binks. <laughs> I'm definitely not advocating Jar Jar Binks should appear in the new trilogy. You are? Will we, will we see his grave? <laughs> will they give the fans that satisfaction? Will, they, will he have like his own special grave and like Yavin? He was, a, he was a senator. He was a famous <laughs> senator. <laughs> he fought at the Battle of Gunga. <laughs> he was a general at the Battle of he's Gunga. Got, he's got a hero's tomb, but he's definitely dead. <laughs> he died shortly after the Empire took over. Can we, can we go a step further? <laughs> yeah, let's go. And have a character come in and say, the, the, the grave of Senator Binks has been desecrated. <laughs> it appears there's Bantha Poodoo all over. <laughs> uh, um, I don't, that's all we can say. Yeah. Uh, and hopefully this video doesn't embarrass us it's, in December. It's fine. It's all fine. You do what you can. It'll be a fun movie. We're going, we're going on just gut instinct on what, what works in Star Wars, what soulless money-grubbing <laughs> producers will, will do <laughs> to, to placate all audience types, and, um, and a little bit of, a little, throw a little bit of Star Wars know-how and knowledge in there amidst the cynicism. And there you go. You got a J.J. Abrams film that, that will, will get a 92% rating on Rotten Tomatoes, and we'll make a ton of money. Star Wars has always been a product. Oh, yeah. 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 I'm okay with that. I'm <laughs> look, just saying. Look at all these products. I know, and we own them all. Fulfill your destiny. No. Oh. Fulfill your destiny. Rich, everyone wants to see you jerk the droid off. Get back here. I'm not gonna do it.